People really want to get me on video these days, so um, I'm going to just freestyle a bit here, just talk about things off the top of my head. Things that people are concerned about, especially concerning uh, their own awakening, and why is it that my book is being so impactful at the moment? Uh, because that's exactly what's happening. Seems that one out of two people or one out of three people that get my book nowadays are uh, messaging me, you know, telling me just how much my book has changed their life, how they've been waiting for a book like mine for, you know, their entire lives. Obviously, most of these people are awakened themselves, but have not found any guidance in the works that are available out there, you know. Um, and, and the fact is that, you know, we're dealing with an invisible science, right? And so, in order to understand the invisible science, something that's invisible that you can tangibly kind of feel through your mind's eye as, as you know, uh, uh, as energy and, and, and feel all these different processes in your body, but then you lack the, um, you lack the language to put it into words because there is no language for it in the mainstream. You know, people always just keep going back to the chakras, right? Oh, it, you know, Kundalini awakening awakens all of your chakras and then, you, you know, you, uh, you know, it's supposed to illuminate you or it's supposed to give you enlightenment. And, and these things are true. And so this is being repeated from one book to the next, from one work to the next. Chakras, enlightenment, and then all the, the different uh, bodily things that are happening after somebody has a Kundalini awakening, which um, is all true, it's all valid, right? But it's like, you know, people are, are buying these books and they're just reading them and it's just the same information over and 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 over. And it's been like this since Gopi Krishna's books, who was, you know, he, he blew open the field of Kundalini science like, you know, dozens of years ago. This was a long time ago, I believe in the 60s or 70s. And since then, that's all people have been kind of anchoring themselves onto is Gopi Krishna's work. And, you know, now with my book, I'm finally giving them something to anchor themselves onto, you know, because um, A, I have a language that is super easy to understand because I think like you, right? I'm just a regular guy that um, had this experience and then spent, you know, 17 years at this point since I had the awakening learning how to integrate integrate the experience but while developing the language to um, to to uh, communicate it to others but it's just my overall desire to want to help people because I feel that I can right you know it's one of my gifts is this ability to communicate in this simplistic way um, and you know there was a lot of factors that led to that uh, to to me creating a work like the one that you're holding in your hand right now, Serpent Rising, the Kundalini Compendium. Yes, you, the awakened person looking at this video. And if you don't have it, you need to get it. And I'm not telling you this to up my book sales. Um, I'm telling you this because it's going to help you. Try, test it and true. I get three, three to five people a day messaging me and that's on very minimal marketing uh, of my book. Imagine the power of my book and what it could do if it could reach thousands per day. I mean, this could heal every single Kundalini awakened person on this planet, okay? And I stand by that because I spent, other than spending 17 uh, years going through it myself after having this really, the highest level of the Kundalini awakening that I had, um, I also spent, um, many many years learning the occult and esoteric arts okay so f you know for those of you who don't know what that is what is what is something that's esoteric esoteric means hidden right you know, occult occult is not relate to the world the word cult now the word cult comes from occult because a lot of cults use occult knowledge right now occult knowledge is knowledge that's been passed down generation to generation generally from mouth to ear esoteric knowledge about the invisible science of energy. So that's what we're dealing with at the end of the day, right? Um, and so my book is jam-packed with that. Not my, just this book, all of my work is jam-packed with that because this thing right here has been completely remodeled over time 
to um, completely function in a way where I'm not only understanding these esoteric and occult mysteries, but I'm able to convey them in an easy to understand, simplistic manner to you people at home, the folks that need this information. Because like I said, we're living in a dark age of spirituality in one sense, but in another sense, we're living in, a, in an age where people are just teeming with potential and, 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 and because there's a lot of awakenings all around the world, right? But, but th there's no knowledge. There's no knowledge, and I'm not trying to put down any of you good authors out there because um, you're doing your best, and I'm not trying to put down anybody, first of all, but I'm just really calling it as it is because when you compare the level of knowledge in my book, just the first 50 pages, I have more information that's going to be valuable to someone going through a Kundalini awakening than... 95% of 300 page books. Now imagine how much information you're gonna get from a 600 page book because that's how big my book is, 650 pages, right? And so then you get to see the potential, right? And then you get to understand why all these beautiful reviews from people that I'm getting of, of you know, this book changed my life. I was in tears when I first read it. I found myself in this finally a science that describes the, the Kundalini awakening process, the transformation that follows, because at the end of the day, I'm not someone who has um, had a Kundalini awakening, but I'm someone who has gone through this process of transformation where the person that I am now is, is at a high, high state of consciousness where, you know, just a few of the things I like to mention would just show how rare and unique my state is. I see myself number one in third person okay so that means that i can constantly feel the energy that i'm inducing into others through communication such as what i'm doing right so you see the movement of the hands the movement of the eyebrows i mean you know it's um some people could call it acting but that's where acting comes from is the ability to uh induce emotions into others right and you do that by controlling your own vibration right so i'm able to do that okay but of course this was not something i was you know people think oh you have a kundalini awakening so you're enlightened no no far from the truth you have a kundalini awakening and sorry i'm just checking to see people aren't coming here i'm just sitting in this beautiful little spot on vacation and and decide to share it uh this video uh, yes, yeah, so people are, are, are looking for... Oh, I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. That's another thing, right? Another manifestation of the Kundalini Awakening is everything is fleeting. The now is a continuous process of change and transformation, okay? The one thing, the something that mattered in one moment and the next it's lost. It's lost in the sands of time, right? And so even as I'm talking to you, I'm really good anchoring words. That's what I do. So I'm anchoring myself into the words. But, you know, I'll look at something around me, a beautiful sunset or like a, a, an animal with striking features or just doing something cutesy that little animals do. And then all of a sudden I'll find myself just drawn. My consciousness just comes out of my body and is drawn into that animal so I could feel what it feels, which is this continuous process of change of the eternal now, which is manifesting every second of every day. And the Kundalini awakening enables you to live in the now so that yes, I have long-term and short-term memory, but it's almost like the, uh, you're just part of this play without your ego getting so like attached to it where you want to control it, right? So there's a letting go process, okay? Anyways, I was kind of talking about the Siddhis, which are the powers. So seeing myself in third person and being able to induce my energy into others. Um, and so that's one of the gifts. The second gift is, um, and there's so many, I'll just name a few main ones. The second gift being that I'm able to um, see light in all things, right? So you see these beautiful trees behind me, these beautiful palm trees, they, 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 there's a certain shimmer, a sheen to them that when I'm after this Kundalini awakening, and I've lived in this for 17 years, so it was the, one of the first uh, manifestations that occurred, I'm able to um, kind of see it like it's pure energy, you know, it's holographic nature, it's digital-like nature, you know, people 
the scientists, phys you know, astrophysicists saying that we live in a holographic universe. I can actually see the hologram, so I can attest to that. That thing is real. We do live in a holographic universe. This is all empty space. You see matter, but that's because of your brain, because your brain's matter registering this, and your brain registering these words, and seeing me visually, all everything coming into your optic synapses, and all things firing up. I mean, there's a whole science of biology, and, you know, um, neuroanatomy, and I go over a lot of that in my in my book, right? Because I wanted to describe the Kundalini awakening process through human anatomy, right? Like science is the one thing we can all accept as being real. So I wanted to use science, the science of the, the way things are, like this is a table, you know, this is a tree behind me. We all agree on that. This is not like, you know, abstract thoughts. No, this is real. So I wanted to use the science of our bodies, human anatomy, the brains, the way in which the brain works, you know, the endocrine glands, the, the endocrine system in general. How does that relate to the chakras? The, you know, the nervous system, you know, the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. How do these things work? So I delve deep. I delve deep into human anatomy, you know, and, 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 and studied it to, to an extent where I was blowing people's minds of like, never mind the Kundalini awakening process, the fact that this guy, this average, you know, guy with no schooling of this stuff has learned this stuff is mind boggling itself. But over time, I have developed an understanding of it where I can describe the, the Kundalini awakening process, the transformation that follows, you know, the the role of the cerebrospinal fluid, which is what, you know, runs through your the central column of your spinal cord. And how does that now activate the major brain centers, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, you know, the thalamus. The thalamus is the most important um, major brain center, okay, along with the two uh, glands that I mentioned. The thalamus is literally the center of our brains and it's these two little eggs that, that are fused together in the middle of your brain and this is our interface with this reality. And so what happens is this Kundalini awakening process that starts as energy moving up your spine electrifies the cerebrospinal fluid which then uh, reaches because there's a central canal of the cerebrospinal fluid that reaches through your brainstem into the center of your brain, electrifying and optimizing the thalamus. Your interface with reality, your thalamus is able to take in a lot more um, information all at once, right? And so that's where these siddhis or psychic powers, uh, a lot of them come from because, you know, people, you know, the idea of empathy, right? What is empathy? Being able to feel what another person feels, you know, being able to, um, to think what other people think, which is telepathy, right? So empathy and telepathy are heightened tremendously. You know, you're going ideally, you're going from using 10% of your brain to using a much higher amount. You know, I'm not gonna say 100 because I don't know what that's like, but just imagine you're just, it's brain power optimization. Okay, that's what a Kundalini awakening uh, does. And so that can be expra explained through um, the optimization of these major brain centers. So the pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus and thalamus, okay? So these four are the main, main ones. Now these four consequently are also involved in the process of reading reality on an energy level through Ajna Chakra, so the sixth chakra, Ajna, okay, which is the one with the two petals. Now, the two petals are interesting because the two petals symbolize and represent the two, um, the Ida and Pingala channels, okay, and the Ida and Pingala channels are the, the feminine, the masculine channel in the body, which rise up through Sushumna, the central uh, column represented by the spinal cord. They rise up simultaneously, blowing open the chakras, okay? They, they meet at the chakras, they don't meet outside of it because their purpose is to optimize and, and awaken the chakras fully, okay? To the fullest extent of, of their uh, abilities to be able to function, okay? So uh, these two things are involved in this process, all right? Uh, the Ida Pingala channel. So they terminate at Ajna Chakra, which is the mind's eye, right? That's how most of you know Ajna Chakra, okay? And then in the Kundalini awakening experience, the energy, you know, once these biological systems are activated through the cerebrospinal fluid and its activation, which begins at the coccyx, you know, the, the, um, at the bottom of the spine, right? That's called your coccyx, which is where Mul in Muladhara chakra is. Consequently, it's actually right at the, between the coccyx and the perineum. So it's in between those two uh, centers, right? Um, and then it, uh, um, as it rises up the spinal column, electrifies and turns on these 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 uh, neurological switch orbs, these um, 
uh, these major brain centers, like I said, thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary pineal glands. And then it activates fully your Ajna Chakra, right? So what does this mean? What is Ajna Chakra activations? Because all interfaces with the spiritual reality require and all divinations, all, all you know, this is how we sense the, 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 the inner reality, the spiritual reality, right? As above, so below, right? That which is above affects that which is the bo below, that below, which is below affects that which is above, but Ajna is kind of the place in between, which is able to read both at the same time. So what happens is your conscious self and subconscious self become linked, right? Bringing about the super conscious state. Now in the super conscious state, you're able to finally uh, experience Sahasrara, right? Which is the next uh, point of awakening, which is the top chakra, right at the top of the head. Um, but during this process, the Brahmarandra, the center point um, at the top of the head, uh, which is where the, uh, you know, a baby's, it's called the fontanelle, where the, the baby's skull fuses, right in the, in the middle, there's the four parts represented actually by the, um, the scarab beetle in the Egyptian uh, tradition. Okay, that's, the Egyptians were like, really ahead of their time. They had the spiritual technology that people are just deciphering right now and blowing their minds open. So actually my next book is going to be really delving deep into uh, the Egyptian technology of the gods, which they had the entire knowledge of the Kundalini awakening, which they call the serpent power awakening, you know, and uh, I'm going to go over that in my next book. I don't want to reveal anything right now. But anyways, we get to Sahasrara and now we have the super conscious state activated, right? And the super conscious state enables you to live above and below at the same time so you exist right here right now it nullifies all thoughts so your ego completely becomes subdued now you do not abolish your ego okay and a lot of people are like oh you got to trend like yes you transcend the ego and consciousness but you will always have an ego all right so you're not going to annihilate your ego to annihilate your ego means to annihilate the physical body okay jesus christ himself one of the most spiritual adepts who was you know um godlike who became a god of the christian uh, pantheon uh, of the Christian religion, um, even he on the cross, you know, his ego said, right, there's two final sentences that he said was, Father, why have you forsaken me? Okay, why have you forsaken me? So that is his ego saying, hey, you know, I'm doing everything you want me to do and you're going to let me die like this? Right? And then his higher self came and took over the consciousness, said, it is finished. Okay, and that was his sacrifice. So I'm using that story to say that you have an ego, you'll always have an ego, you're never going to destroy your ego. And you need to learn to control the ego, okay? You need to, the ego is the bull and you need to guide the ego, okay? That's the Zen Buddhist way of like looking at this entire situation of like, lead the ego, don't let the ego lead you. And that right now, and that's the, that's the goal that we're trying to um, achieve here. One of the goals, right? Another goal is complete activation of your light body, all right? Now, what is your, your body of light or your light body, your holographic body? These are all names for it. It's your, uh, it's your, your etheric, now to be, exact it's not your etheric body etheric body is just one of the bodies sub bodies of the light body there's also the so you have the um lower astral higher astral which is the first one being etheric body connected to your first chakra second one be uh, lower astral uh, higher astral being connected to your swadhisana your second chakra then you have um lower mental body and then higher mental body so this is the elements of um air and fire so your 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 fourth chakra anahata and manipura your third chakra and then you're going into the spiritual plane right because these are also planes of consciousness right lower astral plane you know um higher astral plane lower mental plane higher mental plane and then the spiritual plane all right so essentially you got three major planes of consciousness astral inner related to the lowest two chakras um, and I'm not good at doing this. <laughs> um, and then you have your um, mental plane, all right? So you have emotions, you have thoughts, so mental plane related to the second, uh, the, the third and the fourth chakra. And then you have the spiritual plane related to the three chakras of Visudhi, Ajna, Sahasrara, right? So now this realm is what you're trying to awaken. And that's why a Kundalini awakening on a biological and an anatomical level awakens these uh, major neurological switchboards, these major brain centers, um, these different brain glands that I'm talking about, because that's the big that's the big activation, right? Because what happens is when the Kundalini reaches the center of your brain, activates the thalamus, it no longer has to drop down to Muladhara to rise back up. What happens is it stays in the middle of your brain, okay? Now, 
for it to truly be a full awakening, it has to still reach one more breakthrough Brahmarandra in the center of the skull and awaken the thousand petal lotus, which is Sahasrara chakra. The reason why it's called the thousand petal lotus is just imagine a lotus in bloom. What does it look like? All these petals are starting to open up, right? Now what happens? You're now starting to uh, receive the energies from above. Now there's still higher transpersonal chakras, which I describe in my book, and that's the causal chakra at the back of the head connected to the Bindu. So the Bindu is not here. No, the Bindu is at the back of the head. Okay, that's from tantric teachings as well as the teachings on transpersonal chakra, chakras as well. Um, and then you have the soul star chakra, which connects back to your uh, below your leg, uh, your feet chakra, six inches below your feet, and that's the earth star chakra, which connects us to the earth. And then you have one higher up, which is the Stellar Gateway Chakra. Now, the Stellar Gateway Chakra is very interesting because it connects you to the uh, Milky Way galaxy as a whole, whereas the Soul Star Chakra connects you to the solar system, right? Because think about it. You are in this solar system, uh, you know, on this planet Earth orbiting around the solar system. There's all these other planets, but this is just one of many solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy. So. What does, now going back off this tangent onto the light body experience, the light body enables you intergalactic and interplanetary travel through consciousness, okay? These are the true ascension teachings that actually are only in my book, all right? Now, uh, this enables you through your dreams, so let's say through lucid dreaming, enables you to um, travel the universe and contact beings and experience different lands on different planets and different solar systems, okay? And the highest part of the Kundalini Awakening experience is where it's all headed. What's the purpose, right? I mean, I've given you a, where it's headed, what's the purpose, but there's still one final point and, and, and my teachings on this are absolutely unique. Nobody else has come forth with this theory. It's a theory, but I believe it to be 100% true, which is that you are on this planet to activate this Kundalini energy. That is your sole mission and purpose on this planet, bar none, nothing else. Everything else in your life is just trying to get you to that point. Once you activate this Kundalini and you have this full awakening, you go through this transformational experience, you no longer have a need to reincarnate on this planet. You will now reincarnate on a different planet, in a different solar system, perhaps in a different galaxy, so not the Milky Way, and there's billions of galaxies, we know that for a fact, and have experienced life there, okay? Because your soul does not die. Your soul is going to continue living until the end of the universe. You are God. Okay, and so your soul is currently connected to our sun, our solar system, and experiencing life here, which is being, um, uh, it's, it's affected by the movement of the planets. Okay, this is why astrology is very accurate. So people are like, you know, I'm very good at astrology. They think that I'm psychic, I'm not. I'm just really good at astrology because astrology is accurate because these are the energies that are affecting your personality, your character, who you are, your likes, dislikes, all these things. This is not random, okay? It's affected by the movement of the stars and when you were born and where you were born. And that's what we call your horoscope or natal chart, birth chart, okay? So what, that's why it's very accurate, okay? To describe who you are as a person, where you're going in life and everything else. Why? Because we are connected to the stars. We're from the stars, but currently we're experiencing our star and its life and the life that it's created here on, in this solar system, on this earth, and it, the whole thing is like one synergistic whole, and your body, who you are, is a mini solar system that is a duplicate, it's a reflection of this grand solar system, which is the solar system that we're in, okay? And so the movement of the planets, the movement of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, movement around the sun, is, that's talking about your central sun, this, okay? And not just, Kabbalistically, it's not, um, it's not just the heart chakra, it's connected to the heart chakra and the third chakra, Manipura, okay? This is the, this is who you are. So Kabbalistically, it's the, it's the sphere of Tifereth, which is connected to, um, it's kind of lies in between these two chakras. And I talk about that in my first book, okay? It's a, like I said, I, I describe a, an invisible science of energy. These ascension teachings, you're not gonna find anywhere else, all right? Um, and, I, and I have a, I have a, I have a view uh, and and an understanding that other people don't possess. Okay, so this is my ego talking. This is I wish there were more people like me because then 
my my job my mission would not be so you know i wouldn't have such a responsibility to help awaken all of you people at home and for you to get this knowledge and get these teachings so that you'll you'll have a you'll have a manual to life itself okay that's what that's what i'm trying to that's what i'm trying to bring forth into the world right so i've said in other videos i'm not the message i'm the messenger i'm the messenger of this knowledge okay but you know um all these factors that i'm talking about they all come together and they all give you a big picture of who you are what your purpose is what the kundalini awakening is and everything else and so it's covered in the two books that i have out right now the mages kundalini and the golden dawn okay where it's it's a western esoteric western esotericism approach of studying the kabbalah so all things related to uh western esotericism like uh you know tarot um and uh astrology and uh you know the, the study of the five elements you know that transcends through all my work because everything essentially around us can be um described through the energies of the five elements earth air water fire spirit okay so actually it would be earth water air fire spirit that's the way that it is in the uh so yod he vav he and shin but shin is actually in between uh, the final A and the Vav and so it's actually the reconciler the idea being that the spirit reconciles the four elements of nature right but we are the spirit we bring the spirit into this world and our a kundalini awakening is an awakening of the spirit so there's a complete correlation between a kundalini awakening and the holy spirit of Christianity it's the same thing Okay, it's talking about the exact same thing. So when the Holy Spirit descends on the apostles or descends into the Jesus Christ himself, it's really talking about the spirit, the, the awakening of the consciousness that occurs when the Kundalini is raised to the crown. Okay, when Shiva meets Shakti from the Tantric tradition. All right, now this parallels in other, other traditions as well, as well. And I'm going to talk about that in my third book, which is going to be a continuation of the serpent rising um, you know, of Serpent Rising 1, Serpent Rising, the Kundalini Compendium, my second book, and which is where a lot of this stuff I'm talking about now comes from, uh, as well as, you know, I haven't really talked much about the Kabbalah, but, you know, I'm a Kabbalist first and foremost, Yogi second, and so most of my work, all of my work is Kabbalistically inspired, it's hermetically inspired, okay, and um, we can go into that as well, talking about what is Hermeticism, what is the Kabbalah, how does that relate to today's day and age? How, how does Kabbalah relate to our psychology? Okay, this is super important because, you know, right now you want to get your, your, your head checked, you want to get your, your, your emotion, if people have mental issues, emotional issues, they go to a psychologist, okay? The Kabbalah actually gives you a far better understanding of human psychology, and this is why Carl Jung studied the Kabbalah, okay? And he's, our, he's the most famous psychologist of all time, right? And the, the guy lived like a long time ago, over a hundred years ago, if, if not more. Um, and so, but he studied the Kabbalah, and the Kabbalah has existed for thousands of years, possibly from the beginning of all humanity, you know? According to legend, it was given to um, Adam, it was, it was given to Adam and Eve, um, in, in the Garden of Eden. So it literally goes back to the beginning of humanity, okay? And, and, you know, and then it was passed on mouth to ear and whatever, I won't get into historical parts of it. We can get into that in a different video. I kind of want to give you an overview of everything all at once, you know, get you excited, right? So that you can, so, so that you can know that these books and my work is out there to help you and you should get it.